Alright guys, just going over uh, this little guide here about Queen of Pain. If you guys probably should check out my ring guide, I decided I'm going to turn around and make some video guides. Uh, first off with Queen of Pain, she's a very mobile Queen hero. Queen. She's usually always solo, mid solo for the most part. So she can also suicide lane quite well, uh, mainly here. because of her high mobility, her good ways of pushing down the lane. Um, and just, you know, she's good slows, and then she's very strong mid fight, good in team fights with her mass AoE, her, her slows, and she turns into quite a good semi carry late game, uh, as long as you play her right. Uh, I want to show you guys how I build her. Uh, you, most often than not, for your level 1, usually if you're starting mid, depending on who you're going against, if you're afraid of maybe being ganked, or you're laning against somebody who has a kill potential on you, uh, I'd highly recommend starting off with Blink first. Uh, but if, for the most part, if you think you're going to be safe and you want to try to get a little extra harassing and why not, Scream a Pain is very viable, first pick. Usually you want to pick that. It just depends on your lane. you got to mix it up. Never be pigeonholed into the same build. Um, level 2, you're going to get that Blink if you didn't, and if you did get the Blink, you switch over to Screen of Pain. Uh, level 3, you want to get that pain up. The reason why you want to get this screen of pain up, not only to harass your enemy, uh, but also to push your lane. She, Queen of Pain is one of those heroes who really excels at controlling the runes. And it really makes them break. If you can control the rune in the mid lane, you've won that lane. Almost 90%. Uh, and what this does is, you know, around 145 every 45 minute mark every two minutes you know right before the rune spawns 15 seconds before you push the lane out with your scream of pain hopefully harassing him also in the process with it and then you can go to the lane fast or to the rune faster than anybody else can with your blink not only that if he tries to contest the rune with you he's losing XP and you're not because you have your lane pushed into his tower because of your scream of, sc scream of pain spam that's why it's highly recommended to get this. A lot of people, some people, I say, do get Shadow Strike, and it, it can uh, lead to more kill potentials on time. But between the AOE, the farming, the rune control, and just the flat out burst damage you gain from this when you are trying to gank, uh, I highly recommend this. Um, once you get down here to, you know, you got three points here, you know, you kind of switch it up. Um, you, you want to max this out. You won't put a point into your Q uh, to later game unless your team is really lacking the kill potential. If if your team doesn't have enough CC for the different lanes that you're going into to really land the kill, you don't feel you have enough burst damage, then feel free to pick up that Q for that slow. Get those few auto attacks in. However, if you're playing anywhere a decent game, you know you're going to have a decent lineup and you shouldn't have to get your Q to get kills. You really shouldn't. Between uh, your pain and your scream, you should be just fine. So it's it's more recommended to raise up your blink as most as you can until you're you know you're around this status. Um, that's pretty much how I level my my person up. Now, if you feel that you can get a kill early on with Sonic Wave um, at six, you can pick it up. Uh, depending on how well you're farming, you may be able to. The problem with getting it right at 6 is the fact that you may not have the mana pull to be able to blink in E and R and then blink away because your mana pull is quite low. So you just got to keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. It just really depends on my farm. But you do, um, I do recommend getting it by 8, by the, uh, by the latest. And then making sure you always get it at 11 and 16. It's huge damage. You just you can't live without it. And then for last, you you max out your Q. Mm -hmm. And then the rest, it just goes into stats here. Pretty simple. Um, as far as the build goes, uh, as far as these items here, pretty standard uh, for the most part. You do want to get your treads. Um, I usually start off with a pretty cheap build where... Uh, you want a quick bottle. You always want to have your bottle before the two minute mark, so you can, you know, drink those swigs of the bottle and then still be able to uh, get the rune to fill it up to harass your lane even more. It gives you that advantage. Uh, so sometimes in the beginning, I'll start off with a couple uh, GG branches 
and some trees just just to make me live and have about you know three to four hundred gold extra just so I can get that bottle really fast uh, 300 gold is what you should have 400 if you're not safe in your last hitting ability um, so 400 you can easily get the bottle by 200 even if you're not that good at last hitting it's just it's pretty safe if you want to go that way um, after you get your bottle it should be your first item uh, once you get your bottle from there you can kind of decide how the lane's going if, if you're uh, moving around a lot getting those kills you're probably going to want to get those treads uh, and I recommend keeping them you, you know, I recommend always using your treads based on like you know being an int when you're using spells uh, changing into agility when you're auto attacking strength when you need to and so on uh, she's of course that but even if you're not you usually want to keep at least in the int uh, she's very mana intensive she needs that mana especially early game uh, her spells cost so much but it's because of the damage they do uh, that's also why you're going to want to get two null talismans early so my recommend build here is you basically get bottle first then either get null talismans User was and then channel. switch over user in your channel was kicked from the <laughs> server <laughs> wow people I swear anyways w once you get your two null talismans and your power treads and then your bottle you're pretty much set for mana for, for a while now you can start farming for your kills um, you, you should be able to dominate your lane pretty the well and you, then you want to start working on gaining your aga now the thing is with her I love getting aga first oh, some people yes. don't the thing I like about it it gives her not only health that she needs it gives her mana which she needs but it makes her ult down to a 40 second cooldown man that is insane because oh, yes. the damage she does not only can you constantly be ganking lanes and whatnot, but like her ult is such a, a short cooldown, you can pain. literally use it to farm as well. Oh yeah, I'm going to this lane, I'm going to push mid lane out with my ult, go down, bottom, gank a little bit, and then go back top, and your ult's up again. Like, it's very sh it's very strong, not only for kill potential, it's good for farming potential, the stats on it, it's just amazing. Um, usually when you're oh playing Royal Queen of Pain, Path. you want to have your Agas by the 20 minute mark, your 22 minute mark. I mean, pushing Forward. it would be 24, but you really want it before that. It's kind of like a Blink Dagger for a lot of the other heroes, how they try oh to rush that Blink yes. Dagger. Uh, she's a very good farm hero. She's very good at last hitting. There's no reason not to have your Aga by the 24 minute mark, Path. if not sooner. Um, from there, you have two choices. You have to look at your lineup. You go, hey, am I going to be a semi-carry? Or am I going to be more support for my team? Now, if you're looking at a semi-carry and your team's not going to get a Desolator, Desolator is awesome. It gives you great right-click damage after your spells are on cooldown. Uh, it just gives you the extra damage you need, reduces Forward. the armor, helps out your main carry, hit harder. It's a great item. But, you know, not every time you're going to be that semi-carry role or y your team doesn't need that damage. And that's the case here. We've got this little carrier here who has some awesome items. These are some other items that are very well done on her. Um, one I recommend the most would be the Scythe of Ice. Great item, gives you lots of mana, mana regeneration, health, you know, agility. Just great item for her, but the biggest thing is the two, is the CC on her, the sheep, the hex. Um, provide your team with the extra CC, especially if you're fighting somebody like Storm Spirit or somebody else around those lines. I highly recommend getting this. Sometimes people even rush that instead of your agas. Eh, it depends, but um, if you're if if you're if you feel your team has enough CC, then or enough CC, then I wouldn't even bother with scythe. Just go for a more damaging item. But if it's uh, something you're lacking, I'd recommend it. Now Shiva's guard yeah, is a very is potential item. Uh, it's really debated on, but it is good for her because of the mana, the slow. Uh, that it, it helps out for your team, slowing them down, and their attack speed, and gives you armor. If you're facing, if you just feel like you're dying a lot to physical, you're not really being able to stay in the fight, you're just kind of lacking as far as money goes, um, it could be an item to really think about picking up. It just really depends on their makeup. Like most things, you know, you're probably going to hear me all the time. It all depends, it depends. This game is very situational. Things are one way and one way or the other. Uh, now another big item on her that I haven't mentioned 
is Black King Bard. Very, very good item on pretty much every hero. Um, and still the same on her. The item is going to be very situational as well, but if, if you're kind of forced to be the initiator for your team, you're going to have to get this item early. And sadly, you may have to get it before your before your scepter. Hopefully, you can get it after your scepter, if that's the case, if you're farming well. But if your farming is really suffering, you're getting dominated, and you're forced to be the initiator, you got to get a Black King bar because you're going to blink in, they're going to CC you down, and you're just going to die. So, this is a recommended item. Um, some games, you don't have to get it. Some games you do. Uh, I'd probably say it's 50-50 for me. It really depends on your lineup. As long as you uh, pick your lineup well and you draft well, you shouldn't be forced into it unless they just draft it even better and you're just fighting one of those teams. So just always keep in mind that Black King and Bar is a very viable item and sometimes it needs to be rushed. Um, as far as gameplay here goes with Queen of Pain, here? her blink scales very well. It gets to the point where it's almost as long as a max wing punch hook. 1150 range. That's how far you can basically blink. Not only that, it's on a short cooldown. Six seconds when it's maxed out. You can sit there, use this to go over terrain. You can sit there to, you know, go in here, harass people that you know they're in the jungle. You can go over here, harass them, and then you can blink away to safety. She's very good at harassing. She's very good at pushing a lane, mainly for the fact that she can just be everywhere. Her ult her ult and her E have great AOE range. As, As you can see how far these guys are, I'm going to E here and it's actually middle out range. But anyways, we're oh going to show over here yes. these guys just how big your ult range is. From here I can hit the range creep. Pay for the, privilege. the whole area there your takes damage. And so you can use your R from very far distance even as a, a as a way to kill people the who are running away. Train. Now, as far as your E, you want to maximize that range as best you can. Oh yes. And that's just one of the ways that you can do it. You can sit here and just go over here to the side. You, know, twice, you don't have to quite be on top of the people to actually do it. Just one of those things. Her Q, oh, sadly, yes. is kind of short, but it does slow it down and it does have a cast animation. So the problem with that is you can be LOS, so don't try. The biggest thing here is if you're at a corner and you're going to be getting LOS, you don't want to use your Q right away until you actually have a good spray in the light here, like this. But if they are LOSing here, you could E, and it would yes. still hit the people over here. It goes through terrain. That's something to keep in mind. Um, oh this is yes. just a small, uh, small guide here that about different ways to build her and skill per builds. I'm going to be having another small video later of actually showing gameplay Forward. of Queen of Pain. Um, showing you how to play or how to gank, how to do As your lane efficiently, room control, and so on. This is just a small clip, and thanks for watching.